All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Nature Journal Show. I'm super excited to be here with Christine Elder tonight. Hi, Christine. Hi, Marley. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, I'm glad I got you on the show. So for people who don't know, Christine Elder has been doing nature sketching and nature journaling for a long time, has tons of classes online, lots of cool nature journaling and nature sketching adventures all over the world. Christine, this is a visual audience. So um, maybe like and, and an audience that loves hearing stories about like different nature adventures, maybe you could start us off talking about, um, you know, like your ideal or a recent nature sketching outing and showing um, some pages. Right. I knew you were going to ask that because you always ask your guests. So I have a little pile here. Um, Great. So, you know, you and I have been to a lot of the same places, Costa Rica and Ecuador and everywhere. And one thing I really love to do is um, birding big days, which I call birding big sketching days. So the last time I was in both of those countries, as well as Belize, I went out for 12 hours because that's the day in the tropics, right? Um, and I just sketched as many species as I could. So um, yeah, I have lots of those pages here. Here's a here's a page from a Tandayapa. Oh wow! So just doing quick field sketches as quickly okay, as I wait, could. Okay, wait, let me spotlight you. And I would count them if my guide could identify them. So it was just the quickest you could do with the quickest shape and field marks. And so um, here's another, let's see, here's another example. I have too many pages. Here's some, oh, from Costa Rica. So usually Ooh. I try to do these burning big days and we usually might see like a hundred species in one day and I'll be wow. able to document um, kind of like this about, 30 to 50. And I do have those on my YouTube channel. You can um, see videos about those where I scroll through the pages really quickly. Uh, nice. Yeah. And let's I see love seeing okay. the booted, the booted racket tail hummingbird is, oh. was such a cool one. Yeah, they're so cute. Um, and then I was in Belize last January and I went to the zoo. I think you've been there as well, which is not just a zoo, it's really a rescue and rehab center. And I fell in love with the tapirs. Oh, they were wow. so adorable. And they even let us feed them and pet them on the head. Wow. So those were some of the quick sketches of them. Uh, yeah, and then what else? I guess my biggest trip I've ever done was um, to Malaysia. I went to Borneo Ooh. and I studied carnivorous plants for my master's degree in college. I studied Darlingtonia, which I'm sure you know, the California cobra lily. So I'm fascinated by carnivorous plants. And of course, the, um, wow. the, the Nepenthes are very diverse and almost all endemic to the island of Borneo. So I was really lucky to see those from the lowland um, wetland rainforests of the Kinabatangang River area, all the way up to high cloud forests at Mount Kinabalu. So that was cool. And wow, then, I'm definitely envious of a of of nature journaling and nature sketching in Borneo. That is on my uh, list of places I would love. And I obviously love carnivorous plants. So does Ivea. So I'm gonna look over here at the the comments and say hi to everybody. Send some love to the comments. Lots of people here excited. Um, Debbie says she loved your wildflower video. Oh yeah, um, I see that comment there. <laughs> uh, Kat Bast also um, is familiar with both of us, and so a lot of um, a lot of excitement and uh, a lot of excitement here in the chat. So um, thanks everybody. If you haven't yet, uh, type something into the chat. Let us know where you're at in the world. Um, Drew Rosales is here. Um, great! Wow, that's really cool. To the Borneo thing is is really amazing. So. I guess There's one question. Yeah, let's see this. Wow. <laughs> those guys are a little bit X-rated, but um, we saw those in the trees <laughs> while we were on a uh, boat. And I do not do well with the boats. I get really seasick. So Ooh. that was quite the challenge to try to do those sketches on a tiny little boat. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I bet. Well, okay. So one thing I wanted to ask you about just to, um, and maybe some people in the audience are wondering this too, is maybe you could talk a little bit about the differences between, I noticed like on your website and a lot of your material, you use the term nature sketching. 
could you talk about like how you define nature sketching and maybe what the difference is between nature sketching and nature journaling? Right. Um, I think I would classify myself a bit more as a sketcher. I do really focus more on the plants and animals I'm looking at. And generally, if there's some text, it's just text that's maybe like describing a little bit about the anatomy of them, the, the colors and behaviors. Uh, you know, I'm not so much like you guys, which I, I really appreciate, but, you know, folks that add maps and diagrams and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, my kind of primary goal with nature sketching is to improve my identification skills, especially with mm. birds, because um, I'm kind of a relatively new birder, about 12 years now. And so when I travel to new places, you know, you can see 500 new species. And so I just, you know, try to sketch them as quickly as I can like this and just focus on, you know, those field marks. And so, and mm. I'm not trying to like make pretty pages. I know so many people make beautiful artwork in their journals, but my journals are usually getting, you know, wet and wrinkled from the humidity <laughs> like yours are. And um, so, yeah, I kind of focus more on the drawing, but, you know, not trying to, again, make pretty pictures, but having them be really useful, like uh, the, you know, the explorers of the 16, mm. 1700s, 1800s that were using it as just another way to document and prove what they were seeing and, right. and earn identification. So, Great. so yeah. Well, that's a perfect segue into my next question, which is how did you get started with nature sketching? Did you intend, did you originally start doing it in this way that you're speaking of, like as a tool to help you learn identification better or what's the story behind you getting started? Um, I mean, since I was a little kid, I was always attracted to both arts and sciences and nature. So I was always outdoors, you know, riding my horse and, you know, playing with my sheep and indoors. I was always either drawing and painting or sewing or making sand castles. And so I've always just been really crafty. Um, and then when I was starting to go to college, I, you know, couldn't decide whether to go study mm. art or science and luckily <laughs> figured that I should probably stay with the biological sciences. Although I did get a degree in science illustration from UC Santa Cruz, like a lot of us did. Um, so, I mean, I've always loved drawing accurately and I actually work part-time doing more formal biological illustration, but uh, again, I think I think it was with uh, beginning with a lot of the international travel I started doing at the same time getting into birding that I was really starting to work in the field, which I really hadn't done before and mm -hmm. using okay. the drawing in that way. Cool. Um, yeah, this is really interesting because I think you're sort of one of these like OG people, if you don't mind me calling you that, like, I mean, you've been sort of doing this before the whole huge explosion with John Muir Laws and, and this huge nature journaling explosion, right? Maybe, I don't know. Like, what does you mean? <laughs> well, well, like original gangster is the original, is the, you know, so okay. it's, I'm so like, myself. I mean, do you when uh, and here this is there's a question in the comments too from james how many you filled up but like your first so like your first of these sort of nature sketching or i would consider them nature journaling but i i like right. i'm interested in the definition and distinction you make but like right. when is your oldest one from like when did you start doing this you know like because it's interesting sometimes to understand our lineage and and sort of like our um our, our community and some of these people who like right. our OGs, you know, like um, uh, Hannah Hinchman and Claire, uh, Claire Walker, Leslie that have been do uh, say they, they start in the seventies or whatever, you know? Right, so, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think like 10 or 15 years ago and I, you know, I've been okay. a member of the guild of natural science illustrators for like 25 years. And, you know, I did the UC Santa Cruz science illustration program in 20, uh, tw no, uh, 2006. <laughs> and so I think it was after that. And then when I started traveling more about 15 years ago, that I started actually taking my art that I used to just do in a more formal setting indoors 
and getting more loose and actually using it, it to, to learn something in the field when I was traveling mostly internationally. Okay, so, cool. Yeah, and I would um, fill up, sometimes I can fill up an entire book in one day, like when I was doing whoa. those, um, those uh, birding big sketching days, which again are on my YouTube channel <laughs> from Costa Rica and Ecuador and Belize. But cool. certainly not as many as you. I mean, you, you've you got like over 50 numbered journals. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of the, the quantity um, yeah. over quality thing. So yeah. well, that's really great to hear about the background. And I think people who, who watch this show, one of the thing, one of the benefits they can get from watching these interviews with a bunch of different people is see how people come, what, what people's background is, what, what people have been through to get to, to where they are today. Um, right. So my next question is for some of those people um, who are just getting started, you know, what is your number one recommendation for people who are just getting started with something like nature sketching? Just keep it super simple. Uh, so don't get sidetracked thinking you've got to get all the, the special tools. I mean, I just use a, a cheap, you know, mechanical pencil from Staples and uh, a journal. And I really do love... Uh, you know, John Muir Laws, his, uh, his hardbound journal that opens flat. I really love that. Uh, and just, just doing it, you know, like we say, put in the pencil miles and have the focus be on, you know, learning, learning about what you're seeing and not on the finished product. Uh, mm -hmm. so, you know, uh, like I say, drawing to learn while learning to draw. So the, the quality of your, your drawings will, improve just as a measure of the time you spend out in the field you know <laughs> mm, i like and that I'm, quote we're gonna have to evea type that into the comment evea is really good as sort of like stenographer of like catching oh, these little quotes and i think can you say that again drawing to learning learn. to draw while drawing to learn yes that so is really the focus that being is more on appreciating you know, after you've had a session drawing something, whether it's a mushroom or a bird or an insect, uh, thinking about what got into your mind and not thinking about what's on the paper, you know, and mm. not to compare yourself to everybody else you see online. Just, you know, have, yeah, be pleased with what you've got in your mind, what you noticed about the behavior or the field marks or some iridescence or some... Uh, you know, water droplet reflections or, you know, patterns or so many of those things, you know. All right. Well, that's going into the quotation book. So uh, yeah, I see uh, that. that one's... Thanks, Evia. And then the other thing is that there's multiple people here um, asking questions about a uh, number of multiple journals. So Jackie and then also welcome to the show, Jackie, and then also E. Simon are both talking about multiple journals. This is a little technical, but it is always an interesting question. What do you, where do you fall on the question of like one journal for everything? Or do you have like a bird journal, a garden journal, a messy journal, a, a you know, a fancy journal? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. I mean, I have dozens of journals of all different sizes and shapes, but I think, yeah, I like think most of the time, most, oh, most of the time I'm just working on one and it's usually when I'm traveling. I, you know, I okay. hate to admit that when I'm home, most of the drawing I'm doing is for my, my teaching <laughs> and my mm -hmm. demonstrations. And that when I do go on a trip, you know, I'll bring three or four copies, three or four blank journals, and then work on those um, progressively during a trip. And that's generally when I, I get most of my my sketching done is when I'm on these big trips. Like I'm okay. back to Costa Rica perfect. in July. Yeah. Perfect. So not perfect. All right. That's a perfect segue then to start talking about travel. So, and, and maybe the first question then would be, what is so compelling about those trips that you find yourself really doing, filling so many three to four sketchbooks seems like quite a bit. So like, what is so compelling about these trips and travel in, in your opinion that helps you, you sketch more? Um, well, yeah, because the main reason I do travel is to learn about habitats and species, endangered species, just becoming a better naturalist. So obviously, 
you know, I mean, mainly I am just trying to be a, a, a journaling naturalist when I'm traveling and I travel to explore new habitats. And so, you know, I have the time to do that. I'm not at home, you know, working on everything else that can so easily distract you. Mm. And so it is so inspiring, you know, it's a lot more inspiring to be sketching hummingbirds and toucans and sloths <laughs> than when you're home, just sketching your own, you know, robins, as much as I love uh -huh. them, looking at them in my backyard. I, don't get a lot of time to do that. So. Okay, interesting. All right, so then um, I guess then my next question is, oh, shoot, I had a good one and it slipped my mind. Um, okay, so I guess my next question then is, how did you first combine those two things? Like, have you all, and maybe you partially answered this already, but um, how did you, what was your, was there like a first trip where this connection really clicked between sketching and traveling? Um, well, yeah, I mean, like, I remember 10 years ago, I had a big birthday, one of those big decade birthdays that I'm having again on Monday. Uh, and so I went to Italy and, you know, I was, I was sketching like all the, um, historic monuments and that kind of thing for fun. Uh, there's not a lot of wildlife there. But I think when I started traveling more to the neotropics like you, and yeah, being overwhelmed with all the species and wanting to learn them. And I'm, I'm just such a visual learner. I'm not an auditory learner at all. Like I can't even tune a guitar. I used to try to play a guitar. So I have to see something to, to learn it. And, mm -hmm. you know, when you're more actively doing it, you know, and that's what you and I teach is like when you're active in the moment, sketching something and you're right there, 100%, not thinking about the past or the future, but right there, that's when you're really learning. And, you know, that's the, the sad thing about kids nowadays, um, mm. that they're such consumers. I mean, they, the government even calls, uh, you know, us citizens consumers. And I like to think of us rather that as creators and, and, and have people like putting stuff out there instead of just bringing it all in from a million devices, right? Yeah. So, yeah, okay. I, I think it was when I started traveling more in the neotropics and just being overwhelmed with all the species that I needed to learn. Yeah, definitely. And and I think some people actually feel overwhelmed by that and never sketch at all. But I, I guess what I want to ask now is just, you make such a good case for sketching as a learning tool while traveling, it almost sounds obvious and essential. And I think you're preaching to the choir with this audience, but for, for, you know, if we, if we look at that argument and then we look at most people who are traveling and most people who are um, studying natural history or studying science in, in the tropics around the world, why do you think it is that more people aren't sketching? Like I recently stayed at multiple science field stations throughout the neotropics and I don't, I think in most cases, I was the only person that was doing sketching. So you made a, a great case. And right. in my mind, it makes sense. But why, why aren't more people doing it? I know, I think it's such a waste. And it's such a shame that nowadays that we have all these other recording devices, you know, like our phones and our cameras and everything else that we look at, we look at drawing as something that only an artist does. And it's such a shame, especially for teachers to be afraid to incorporate drawing with their kids. It's almost like if a teacher said, oh, I have terrible handwriting. I'm not going to teach the, you know, the first graders how to write the letters of the alphabet. I mean, that would just be not make sense. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, it's just another way to, to document the world. And people have just separated drawing and painting and, you know, whatever you do with media on a piece of paper that mm -hmm. um that only certain people have that and and right. teachers have have uh you know can reaffirmed those you know how many times did you hear mm -hmm. maybe when you're a kid oh you know it's okay if you can only draw a stick figure you know it, it's your cousin who inherited the art gene right oh. i mean how many people have heard that from teachers and it's just a total shame and so, you know, I'm glad that 
people like you are going to field stations and, you know, introducing it to the instructors and to the visiting um, students and having them realize how they can incorporate that. Um, yeah, like, you know, I used to work as a field biologist and that was another way that I enjoyed uh, deepening my experience and, and collecting data. It's really valuable way for uh, a biology student or, you know, field biologist to mm -hmm. document what they're seeing, you know, in addition Definitely. to all of our modern devices. Right? Definitely. Great. Wow. Okay. Um, we could go on that one forever, but uh, maybe you could just tell us a little bit about your, uh, a couple more travel questions here. You know, what do you think has been your favorite all time place to do nature sketching? Well, I mean, of course, the most um, exotic place I've been is Malaysia uh, and, of course, Ecuador and the Andes and the Amazon are really diverse. <laughs> um, Alaska is one of the most, my most favorite places to go as well. And I did sketch on the Pribilof Islands, all of the nesting um, um, puffins and wow. the, uh, yeah, those guys. But I think I've probably done the most of my sketching in the neotropics because it is so diverse and it, it's so challenging. I mean, I'm just like a very competitive person. So I think that's why I like to do these sketching big days. Um, and that's why I like to challenge myself to, to draw everything I see, even if it's, you know, very rudimentary like these guys. Um, so, yeah, probably the neotropics. And, that's pretty uh, good those i wouldn't call those hummingbirds too rudimentary i think the night before last i was um watching video of hummingbirds i took video at tondayapa uh yeah. in slow motion of hummingbirds and so i've been practicing drawing from that even in slow motion it's really hard so those are those are pretty good cool. and i think like when you play back a video on youtube can't you make something go in slow motion too? yes you can. yeah yeah so I have a video that I posted from Tandayapa on the on the YouTube channel as well. So yeah, those guys are, I mean, you see how many 30 before breakfast. <laughs> That's why I had to have all of their little names right next to them as fast as I could write them. <laughs> yep. Nice. Awesome. And one of them hit a window and it died. So I drew it. Oh. Uh, I, I drew the one that passed away so that I could really look at the anatomy of its feathers and then a living one. That wasn't the oh, same yeah. one. That's not the one that died. <laughs> okay. But yeah, the fawn nice. bursted brilliant. Nice. That is so cool. Okay. So um, let's get into a little bit about teaching and then it will be time for the lightning round. I know people are always excited about the lightning round. There's a very active chat. So we'll try to bring in some stuff from the chat to ask um, and some really interesting conversations. People can always go back and, and check on the chat too after the show. Um, that's always really fun to, to check out. Oh, yeah, but let's I, talk, I see the chat. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about your teaching. Cause you do a lot of, of teaching in person and online. Maybe you could start telling by telling us what is the most, most important thing you have learned from teaching? Well, it's funny because they say um, you never really learn a subject until you teach it, right? And I used to actually be a high school and uh, a junior college biology professor. And mm. so same thing. It's like you really don't learn, you know, like photosynthesis or mitosis until you have to teach it, right? Mm -hmm. So I think the teaching and... Yeah, and just realizing how much sometimes people have fear around drawing and trying to mm -hmm. trying to loosen people up, take that out of there. But uh, you know, like a lot of us, you know, things changed three years ago last week or this week when the pandemic hit. So a lot of us had to um, kind of diversify our income streams and find other things to do. And that very week, I started just teaching every single day for free or by donation online and have been doing it ever since and developed some online courses and that kind of thing. But thankfully now starting to get out 
into teaching real people again, which is wonderful because it gets kind of lonely just looking at your uh, <laughs> teaching to your webcam here. <laughs> so it's That's, been wonderful. Uh, I've done a few live events uh, recently, like the Winter Wings Birding Festival in Klamath Falls where I taught. So I cool. love getting back into <laughs> connecting with real live living people. Absolutely. Even though I do, I, I did talk to someone, I think I interviewed someone, I'm blanking on who it was at this moment, but that mentioned you specifically and your, your, your daily, the daily things you were doing during COVID as like a real lifesaver during COVID. So there's, uh -huh. I think that you probably have already gotten feedback on, on that output and everything, yeah. but just to remind you, there were people who were that was like oh. a really important part of their COVID survival strategy. So uh, well, that had for a me too, you know, because I was lonely yeah. and and I love teaching. So I don't really feel whole unless I'm I'm you know teaching. I just it's just part of who I am. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. So then my next teaching question then is, um, oh, you know, what are the differences that you notice between teaching in person and online? And maybe you can tell us more about some of your offerings online. And I think some people are already asking um, about that there was a hint that there might be some special um, code or offer or something like that as well. Oh, yeah, that's um, below. If you're watching from YouTube, there's a link. And I think you also put a link yes. in this. Um, Stream so yard. tell us about, you might as well right. tell us about that. Right. Well, so I try to teach um, every couple weeks and I teach different things. I've taught everything from how to draw a tardigrade to how to draw mm -hmm. a blue whale. And so I really love to turn people on to things that maybe aren't as, you know, aren't that uh, charismatic megafauna, right? like to try to do the weird things. And so I've been doing a series lately on species from Africa because I'm leading a tour there in September. And people really love plants. And I did do the wildflowers, as you said, someone mentioned earlier. So this weekend I'm doing one on succulents. And, you know, that includes your common cactus as well as aloes and euphorbs and stone crops and ice plant. There's a lot of families actually that are... Um, mm -hmm. succulent. And, and when I started researching it, I realized how, what a huge percentage of the world's succulents, not including cactus are endemic to Southern Africa and uh, yes. this very specific habitat and called going, a, right? Karu, yes. And it's one of the most diverse, um, floristic regions in the world with 9,000 species of vascular plants and something like 70% of them are endemic, living nowhere else in the world. And that's true with the high percentage um, of the succulents, including the stone crops, and the euphorbs. So anyway, um, as usual, I start out my, my talks with learning about the biology and anatomy, because I think that's half the battle. If you know really what something looks like and you know understand its biology and its, its anatomy and its behavior, that's half the battle to, to drawing mm -hmm. it because, you know, most of what drawing is, is just observing closely and holding the pencil in your hand is just almost an afterthought, I think. I mean, there's some, you know, hand-eye coordination, but the more you know something, the better. Like when you're talking to me about the hummingbirds, you know, I've been sketching hummingbirds a ton for years. And so the more I know them, the faster I can do it and um, the more confident I have. So anyway, that's, I always love to spend as much time teaching people about the um, anatomy and biology of something as how to draw it. I realized wow. I never turned my lights on. <laughs> There's my lights. I don't know if that makes any difference. <laughs> oh, you look, you look great already. So okay. wow, that is really exciting. So I'm not going to let you just sort of uh, casually mentioned South Africa without talking a little bit more about the trip that you're going to be leading there, because that would be, you know, people are already like, oh, ex getting excited about succulents. But so this code here is for your succulents class, but you're also- Yeah, that's a half go... off the succulents class that's happening this Saturday. And you can join us live or watch the replay anytime in the future. Great. Um, yeah. And then so how do people find out more? And maybe you could talk a little bit about the trip you're doing with tropical birding, right? To to South Africa. Right. 
Right. If you go to my main um, website, um, and I think I think we linked that on the YouTube. I'm trying. Yeah, to it should it. be in the description, but right. I can also. Christineelder.com slash Marley. So that'll go to my website, and um, you'll be able to see information. So. Like you, you know, we uh, are part of the Tropical Birding um, Tours family and have done lots of things with them. And mm -hmm. so a few months ago, uh, they interviewed me on their Naturally Adventurous podcast, actually oh, Charlie cool. uh, from Tropical Birding Tours. And then he's like, hey, you haven't been to Africa? Co-lead a tour there with me. So yeah, nice. it's going to be a nature sketching focus tour um, from Cape Town to Kruger. It's 14 days with only six guests. And so it's gonna, I think we've sold two seats so far. And yeah, there's all the info on my website as well as on Tropical Birding Tours website as well. Wow, that is super exciting. Yeah. And um, just a couple more questions here before we go into the lightning round. I know people are really excited about that already. Um, so a, a couple more, I guess, uh, nature sketching questions. Is nature sketching, would you consider nature sketching a hobby? Um, well, I mean, if it's something you enjoy doing that is relaxing and enjoyable and therapeutic uh, that you do in your spare time, it's, it's that. But uh, mm -hmm. it also can be used for more, you know, scientific purposes and and for me, I think it's very useful for kids to get them inspired about conservation because you can't mm -hmm. love something unless you know it and you can't know it unless you've actually observed it. So the process of drawing is the best way to do that. And so I'm, I'm you know, really focused on educating kids about wildlife, especially endangered species, um, mm -hmm. to, to encourage them to to know and have empathy and compassion for something so hopefully they'll they'll help save it so you know it's got a very important role but it can also you know it just starts out i guess as a hobby too for for mm -hmm. many of us <laughs> great and then what about the di what about urban sketching do you do you know that seems like something that's really grown quite a bit um in the last like couple decades um, what do you think about urban sketching and, and its popularity compared to like nature journaling, for example? It seems like nature uh, urban sketching is more international and cosmopolitan and diverse. Like any thoughts about that? Um, well, I mean, anytime you're sketching something, you're observing and learning about it. And like I said, when I was in Rome, I was sketching all the ruins a lot. Right. <laughs> so uh and you know when you're in a bigger city there's more diversity of interesting architecture to observe actually my dad was an architect and a home builder and i think my earliest memories were of him at the drafting table which i still have um making the architectural plans and i think that put the seed in my head of wanting to draw you know very detailed things although i ended up you know drawing plants and animals instead of houses but you know not everybody can get out into nature so you know if you live in a city you know that's a wonderful way and it's so great also to people watch too now yeah. people are challenging i know you said you went to um some uh life drawing classes the other day and i also wholeheartedly suggest those because they're so great at getting you to just start drawing because you don't have time to wait around and if those people are posing their nude for you 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 yep. better respect them and try to get some sort of pastel drawing down absolutely so, you know wherever you wherever you live drawing whatever's in front of you um you know it doesn't matter if it's nature or not it, you're still gonna connect more closely to your environment, whatever that environment is. So I, yeah, yeah, I love the urban sketching movement. Cool. Okay. Well, it looked like some people were, we were, we were losing some of the audience, but more people join back in. Don't leave now because the, the lightning round is coming up. So, um, oh, I see. Christine, are you ready for the lightning round? I guess. <laughs> okay. Make I'm your, not very good at thinking a, quickly on my feet. Can you make a lightning sound? <laughs> nice i'm gonna that was really uh, the second one was even better it's just maybe lightning i love, I love nice. sheet lightning we had that oh. when i was a kid in in the prairies 
All right, so we're going to start off with just the sort of yes or no ones, and then there will be some longer, more fun um, ones at the end. And people in the chat, you can answer your own version of the, your own answer to the lightning round too. So let's start with these short ones. Okay, first off, is coffee an essential art supply? Oh, yeah. Um, And chocolate, of course, dark chocolate. Yeah. Got mine right here. Um, yeah. Okay. Organized. I travel with a little Via, inst- like Starbucks Ooh, Via instant yes. coffees. Yes. And I'll just put those in my drinking water container when I'm out. Um, a little pick me up in the afternoon when I'm sketching out all day. So, yeah. yeah. Pro tip, everybody. Pro tip. You should write that one down. That is a, that is a pro tip right there. Okay. Yeah. Organized or messy? It, uh, for what? For, for like in the journal, I don't know. I'm very ADHD, if you can't tell already. So I'm always trying to do a million things at once. So I'm generally kind of messy, but I like to be organized when I can. <laughs> okay. Some people just answer both on that one. I've noticed in our our sort of contingent of people. And then what about um, nature sketching alone or with other people? Uh, well, usually I'm alone unless I'm leading a group. It's a bit easier, you know, to get in your right brain when you're alone. So I do enjoy that. Great. Okay. Um, does your family understand your art? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. (laughs) Okay. Um, snacks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I have a whole list of snacks in one of my um, nature sketching weekly tips videos. <laughs> so Great. I take all the snacks because I get hangry very easily. So yeah, I got chocolate and those those goo those goo things you get from REI and and the chalk shock blocks and all of that stuff. I, I usually carry a lot of things with me when I go to the neotropics because you know when you're traveling, all you can find in a local grocery store or mm. plantain chips or something. So yeah, yeah. it's really hard to get really high quality, high energy snacks for in the field. So yeah, I usually bring a couple pounds of those when I'm traveling. <laughs> Great. All right. Um, are you a perfectionist? Yeah. I mean, I'm totally a procrastinating perfectionist, but <laughs> um yeah, you know, again, I've tried to loosen up, especially when you're trying to draw birds. You just can't wait around all that day. They'll be gone. So I've, I've really loosened up, I think, as I've gotten older and just getting something down on the paper. All right. Ink or graphite? Uh, yeah, I've been moving a lot more towards ink. Uh, you know, I love the feeling of graphite, but of course it smears. So I'm getting a lot more used to um, drawing in, in pen. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you ever put art supplies in your mouth? (laughs) Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. And you know, you don't want to dip your brush into your coffee or or drink your, your, your watercolor paint instead of your coffee. (laughs) Definitely not. Um, fast or slow? Yeah, I'm pretty fast. Yeah, especially, again, with the sketching, I've learned to just get it down, especially like with those hummingbirds, you know. Definitely. And then what face do you make when someone walks up to you and says, you are so talented, I can never do that? I'm like, yes, you could. Let me show you. Here, here's a piece of paper. Let's do it together. (laughs) Nice. I I try to have an encouraging, happy face. Definitely. Okay. So let's go into some of these longer lightning round questions. Um, If you could nature sketch with any historical figure, um, who would you want to go with? Oh, Maria Sibylla Marion, who Mm -hmm. lived, you know, in the uh, 1600s and traveled by herself to Suriname and discovered the life cycles of moths and butterflies. She was really brave. Yeah. Great choice. And also a, um, you know, she should be more famous than she is based on yeah. everything she did. A lot of people don't know about her. I have had um, a couple, I think Stephanie Dole, um, AKA oh. Beetle Lady. Right. That was her choice as well um, for oh, historical cool. figure. Really good, really good choice. 
Now, of course, um, both of us have been to the Galapagos Islands, and so you can't help but think that you would love to meet Charles Darwin and yeah. tool around and look at the animals together. Oh, yeah, here's my giant tortoise from Ooh, the uh, Galapagos. <laughs> nice. Great one. Yeah, people have chosen him before as well. Okay, what about if you could have a nature journaling or nature sketching superpower, what superpower would you want to have? That's a good one. Can it be like better eyesight? Because sure. <laughs> thank God I've got some pretty good binoculars, but I have a hard time seeing things sometimes. <laughs> yeah, some people wish they could have vision that would, uh, you know, zoom in, zoom out, x ray vision, you know. So or somehow to slow cool. time down for things that move quickly. Yes, absolutely. All right, if you were stranded on a desert island and all your survival needs were taken care of, what five art supplies would you bring with you? Uh, yeah, a really good book and a um, pen, mechanical pencil, and a little watercolor set, probably a bigger watercolor set. <laughs> and I lost yeah, our little, our little water brushes. Okay, uh, I lost count. Was that five i think that was okay um a journal then, a pencil a pen watercolor set and the water brush there we go okay and then last question for the lightning round what animal would be best at nature journaling and nature sketching probably one that had some pretty good dexterity so that would probably have to be another primate <laughs> it certainly wouldn't be like a sloth <laughs> it'd be like <laughs> yeah, I um that came up in a video about sloths and whether they can nature journal or not. And someone said that someone had a good um response because I said their claws would be bad at holding a paintbrush. But all right, right, cool. Good job with the lightning round. That was awesome. Yeah. All right. So um some of our closing questions here. Um let's start with these sort of um, you know, more personal questions. What would you say, you know, with you, you have a lot, you have a, a great body of work already behind you and a lot of stuff online and in person, a lot of people that you've reached, but what would be, and a lot of, um, you know, science illustration, which we should mention, some people were excited to learn for the first time that you did the, the cover and the illustrations for the Habitats of the World book, for example. So you have this body of work already behind you, but what would be the holy grail for you in your work? going forward? What would be like the, the biggest, most amazing thing that you could do? I would love to spend a year traveling around the world, staying at my um, students' houses and volunteering at local wildlife rescue centers and, and sketching the wildlife. <laughs> wow, that is Especially awesome. Especially a wild pangolin. Those are my, my heart animal. Wow. Okay. So if you're one of Christine's students and you're spread out around the world, you heard, you heard what the Holy Grail is and you could help uh, make that a reality. That is a really, that is really cool and really exciting. Well, um, I respect you for, you know, getting rid of all your stuff and traveling the whole last year. That was just amazing. Can't wait yeah. to see what you have planned for the future. I'm still recovering from that. So yeah. <laughs> that was pretty intense. Yeah, that was it was it was fun. It was good. Okay, so then what do you think is the future of of nature sketching and nature journaling? And we we talked a little bit about it was sort of like a trick question in some ways. I I use the word hobby and I personally use that word kind of with an in a negative way, but I tried to ask the question neutrally. Um right. and, but you you still took it into the direction of like, well, nature sketching does have more purpose than that. So maybe you could talk about, you know, like what do you see as the future of nature sketching and nature journaling and and in what way can it play an important role with all of the serious things? I mean, there's a lot of serious things happening in the world right now. If we're out there asking people, oh, let's paint um, you know, cute pictures of of animals, like are we just, you know, distracting people and giving people something positive to do for a little bit of time? Or is there something bigger that we're, we're also doing? 
Yeah. Well, I mean, I think the future of nature journaling is really bright and is really big right now. And I hope it doesn't just go by the wayside like, uh, you know, other other fads uh, and that people realize its use. I think it does have two different uses, maybe for two different categories of, of people. Um, the, the therapeutic use you know, because of course we mm -hmm. have so many people in this world that are, you know, displaced from climate change or from wars and they are having lots of, you know, mental issues. And if you can, you know, get them to just enjoy themselves for a few minutes, you know, that's not, that's, that's not a small thing. You know, we shouldn't feel guilty about mm -hmm. sharing joy or having joy because when our, when our cup is full, um, then we can fill other people's cups, you know? So if we don't take care of ourselves, you know, yeah. including taking care of our, our students or, or um, you know, groups that need us, children or ho homeless children or, or you know, mm -hmm. whatever, um, then, you know, th that the world's in a bad place. But in terms of the nature journaling for more of the, the scientific use, you know, that's, important in, in another valid way, like we talked about, that uh, if you're inspiring people, maybe especially that live in places where there's a lot of endangered species, you know, like I've worked with people mm -hmm. that uh, lived in communities where like parrots and macaws were being poached out of the trees and trying to inspire mm -hmm. the kids um, to, to love them and, and not have their you know, parents or cousin be uh, cutting the trees down and trying to sell the parrot for a thousand dollars. And so, you know, it has a really important role to play, I think, in environmental conservation, which, you know, we are in the sixth major uh, mass mm -hmm. extinction event right now. And if we don't do something pretty soon, you know, we're yeah. going to be in um, deep doo doo. Yeah, definitely. Wow. Okay. Very cool. Okay. So, um, that that's really great to hear hear you say that and everything um i think then you know it, you know is there anything else that we didn't really talk about that you think um is something important about your work or your your perspective that um we ha i didn't ask about or we haven't had a chance to talk about um i don't know i think we got a lot of it uh yeah, I think we did a great job. Thank you. I mean, I really appreciate you having me on. And it's fun where our paths have crossed in so many different ways. And so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've both got the same uh, philosophy about uh, nature and nature journaling and and uh, education. So, yeah, I think we covered the main things. So, yeah, great. I just hope well, people um, check out that link on my website at christineelder.com slash marley. And that's where I have some uh, extra things, including my free weekly sketching tips they can sign up for and uh, half off for my uh, succulents class. On Great. And then um, one thing did come up here um, that I can't let slip by, but Barbara Chan mentioned this. What do you have to, is this true? And if so, maybe you could uh, tell us a little bit more about that. Oh, Barbara, you're so funny. Yeah, I mean, I like to make things fun. And so I usually try to dress up. I've got lots of different uh, outfits. And well, like when I teach about zebras, I have a black and white striped shirt, you know, so I don't go too overboard. <laughs> nice. But for Dia de los Muertos, I did um, dress up like the, the Katarina skull. That was really fun. I taught people how to draw a human skull in graphite and Ooh, carbon dust, which was very fun. Nice. Ooh, carbon dust. <laughs> so, yeah, wow. I mean, I like to keep things fun. <laughs> Great. And then one last question here that I'm noticing. Christine is asking about the Costa Rica trip. Did you do? Did you lead a Costa Rica trip recently, or do you have one coming up? Yeah. Oh, hi, Christine. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, I have a good friend that owns Rancho Naturalista in, mm -hmm. in San o, south of San Jose, Costa Rica. And I've been going there um, for the last few years to help out in the slow green season. Uh, and so uh, I've invited a few people down. So we do have a few people uh, signed up. We're just going to have a kind of informal 
casual uh, group there because I'm going to be there anyway for a month. And so cool. um, and that's in August people. or July. It's in the summer, right? Yeah, it's July 15th through the 22nd. And people can find out about it on my um, website. Uh, it's one of the blog posts on the uh, right hand side. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Great. Yeah, yeah. I'll be leading. Uh, I'm leading a Costa Rica or I'm trying to organize a similarly informal Costa Rica nature journaling trip. But it will be in in between Thanksgiving and Christmas. So, oh, nice! And where yeah. are you guys going? Um, we're gonna just be on. I have a friend who has a, a hotel on the beach on the northwest coast, so it's gonna be mostly focused um, there at the beach. And then we're also gonna be doing oh, some I mean, tide like the Guanacaste area. Yeah, it's Guanacaste. Yeah. Oh, cool, cool. Yep. Yeah, I've got some friends who live in Arenal from high school. So, oh, yeah, wow. I've been up there. Yeah, very cool. That's, that's yeah. a better season where everybody wants to escape our northern winter. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Great. Well, um, thank you so much for being on the show. And thanks for everybody for joining in. This was a really big live audience. So oh, great. we're excited to, to hear the conversation. And um, for all of you that are watching live and for all of you that watch this as a recorded version, thanks for joining in. Okay. Take care, Marley. Thanks. All right. Bye, everybody. <laughs> All right.